This video will very likely get me banned from Ido's movement culture and all future events. I would still like to go to some of these events, so I hope you enjoy and learn from this. I spent over $20,000 training with Ido Portal for six years, from online coaching and workshops to movement camps and an internship. I even regularly studied under one of his closest students for two years. To say that Ido Portal has had an enormous influence on my life is to put it lightly. I wanna do a real, honest review of Ido, even though it could get me blacklisted from his closest circle, because we need to acknowledge some things before we can move forward. Public reviews of Ido tend to fall into one of two camps. People either worship him and believe he's like Jesus, come back from the dead to teach a sinner's movement they don't deserve, or people hate him because they think he's a pretentious cult leader with a huge ego, and he charges way too much money for what he does. Let's get something out of the way first. Ido does have a big ego, but he has the skills to back it up. There's no one else in the movement culture that can do near the things he can do. These skills across so many disciplines can only be bought with a single currency, hard work, and decades of it. He calls himself a generalist, but drop him in a room with professionals, specialists in a single field, hand balancers, calisthenic athletes, acrobats, dancers, capoeiristas, weightlifters, climbers, and boxers, and he would still hold his own. Drop him in a room with other teachers and coaches, and for the most part, he's in a world of his own. But let's talk about money. First of all, anyone can charge whatever they want for their services or business. Because Ido's so good at what he does, this is doubly true for him. Let's make this clear right away. I think it's unfair for people to disregard what he has to offer because they're shocked by how much it costs to study with him. But Ido claims that money doesn't matter to him and that his prizes are high simply as a barrier to weed out the wankers who would dilute his work or not take it seriously. I get it, but training with Ido is so demanding of both time and energy that the people who can financially afford to train with him long term don't have the time or energy necessary, and the people who do have the time and energy can barely financially afford to train with him once, let alone long term. Still. I get it, I'm not gonna begrudge Ido for being good at business. But if he really just cared about movement and developing even just his close students, he'd build a facility somewhere and people could come live and train there, John Danaher style, like people often do for dance and martial arts. But teaching workshops pays better. Does John Danaher charge a lot of money for his workshops, online videos, and personal training? Yes, but he's also set things up in a way where the biggest financial burden to coming to train with his team intensively is just coming to train with his team intensively. And Danaher has an unparalleled record of incredible students as a result of this. If Danaher had just done things the way Ido does, $1,100 for online coaching, $3,500 for a movement camp, $6,500 for a week of semi-private training, all by a direct wire transfer to an offshore tax haven, and no other serious offerings, Jiu-Jitsu on the whole would have suffered for the lack of accessibility to his teachings and it would not be where it is today. To be fair, Ido did make an exciting shift and offered a three month intensive in September, but it was only for a small number of active students of online coaching. He doesn't seem to be offering it again and God knows how much it costs. Whether you hate him or love him, I think everyone will agree that Ido is a hard worker and obsessively devoted to his craft. He's very well read, well educated and very intelligent guy. When it comes to movement, He's able to tie things together in ways that people have never thought of before. Why did Ido come up with the movement culture? Because he had a vision of people organizing around movement the way we organize around food and meals. For God's sake, the man for all practical intents and purposes created the field of movement and its study, despite it obviously having existed for the entire duration of life on earth. Sure, Herbert LeMann founded parkour in 1913. That's awesome, but that's just a tiny section of the field Ido's turned us to. But that's where his vision starts to break down because he doesn't really want people to organize around movement. He wants people to organize around himself and his prescriptive version of it on his terms. He talks about having disciples like Odelia and Johnny, and then the mentorship students, and then students like me who have studied with him for years and proven their loyalty over time. And then there's customers who just paid to train with him or traveled internationally to take one of his workshops. No loyalty there from either side. Then there's everyone else, the wankers, who either don't believe in movement and are therefore overweight, depressed, and sedentary, or are in competition with Ido, and I literally quote, because I will never forget him saying this, eat the scraps from under his table. Right now, the movement culture is a pyramid that follows Ido. He does his own research, 
tests new theories with his partner, and then he shows it to his mentorship group. They in turn teach it to their local movement students. Ido brings in a few people every now and then, like Shai Farhan, Martin, Iran Burt. Maybe one of his mentorship students will bring something new to the table, but that's it. It's very much a top-down hierarchical approach. Call it trickle-down education. Ido has publicly talked about how if your mind is an open parachute, it gets filled with shit. And he prides himself on being closed-minded. He will intentionally not listen to anyone unless you've proven yourself and he deems you worthy. Even academics who devote their entire careers and often lives to study one field are often dismissed as non-practitioners. He's expressed disinterest in even just being interviewed by these non-practitioners. To a large extent, that's why his movement culture vision is failing. I get that Ito might not want his research or message to be diluted in the mainstream, but frankly, that's the least of my concerns now. GMB and Animal Flow already did it anyway. There's no communal research, no collaboration, no room for different ideas or discussion of them. But what gets me is that there easily could have been and still can be. Most people who follow Ito are very smart, very hard workers. Just imagine if all these people brought their insights to the table, sharing their findings and research, working together to further the field of movement, how far could we go? How much more could we accomplish? How many more people could we help? Ida's got a big brain, but one brain of any size isn't enough to fuel the development of a complex field. And to quote one of Ido's favorite sayings, just bringing in a few helpers each year is like pissing on my leg and telling me it's raining. Ido has said he doesn't want his work to go mainstream and he's getting his wish because the reward of such a closed-minded pyramid system is stagnation. His movement culture, the way it is now and has been, will never grow as big or as far as it could. And that's a damn shame. Ido doesn't seem to care about modern sports science research either. That's a huge mistake. The science he references and paradigms he operates under are mostly from Charles Poliquin. And RIP to Charles, but sports science has advanced a lot in the last 20 years and many of Poliquin's ideas, such as on tempo and time under tension, are outdated while others, like Biosignature, were completely unfounded in the first place. In 2016, when Gabrielle Wolf introduced the optimal theory, which culminated decades of research in motor learning into a groundbreaking new paradigm, I didn't hear one peep about it from Ido or anyone else in the movement culture. I didn't hear anything about it until I took a graduate motor learning course five years later. And when I posted my video about it in Ido's Facebook group, it was removed. Is Ido Portal a great teacher? Absolutely. And this is a huge reason why I decided to devote so many years of my life to training with him and under his ideals. His track record for pulling the best out of his students is unparalleled. Just do a search online for before and after training with Ido videos. Look at Roy E and Odelia Goldschmidt or Johnny Sapinoso. Look at me. His program is tough and it's not for everyone, but if you can commit to doing the work, his method will get you where you want to go reliably. However, as great as the results are, he and his method heavily live in autonomy in his students, which literally decades of research and optimal theory has shown is a very bad thing. Do I think having some structure is important? Absolutely. But too much structure and too much rigidity in that structure increases risk of burnout and is extremely detrimental for motivation, which is arguably the most important thing for students, practitioners, and teachers alike. Here's a simple graph I learned from my sports psychology professor, Ted Butrin. Call it the I'm good, you're good graph. The farther you are on the x-axis, the more confidence your coach has in his abilities to teach. The higher you are on the y-axis, the more confidence your coach has in you. The top right quadrant is where you want to be. I'm a good coach and you're a good athlete. Therefore, I trust your confidence and my confidence to help you. Ido is on the bottom right. He knows he's a good teacher, but he doesn't trust you to be a good student. And therefore, what you do needs to be micromanaged in all these various ways so you don't make mistakes. Ido, of course, doesn't have time to micromanage you because he has too many students and he's busy doing his own training. But this mentality permeates down that pyramid as an intrinsic part of the Ido Portal method because it's part of his foundational beliefs. You don't know what you're doing, so I will tell you exactly what to do. For example, improvisation is such an integral part of his system. The mantra is isolate, integrate, improvise. But at the same time, he doesn't trust you to truly improvise on your own. His improvisation system exists in a very rigid structure. It's almost all locomotion, not dance, for all but his closest students. There are sets of moves that he has told you exactly how to do, and any deviation from that method is not a variation, it's a mistake. I'm sure some level of structure is important, but it feels like my students and I are testing and refining and playing with these things by ourselves because there is no discussion from Ido or his culture about it. It's simply that this is the way we do it. Don't research it, 
just research within it. Just imagine if all these incredible movers all around the world were encouraged to play around with an infinite number of possible moves. How far could we as a community go? How much further would our movement intelligence develop if we were encouraged to explore and create on our own and then gather and share our findings together? Here's a big question. Would I recommend people to go train with Ito? Yes, absolutely. But I think only certain people will get the most out of it the way it is now. You have to have money, preferably a lot of it, and a six-figure income that can support the financial burden without major stress. You're hardworking, passionate about training, intelligent, and want to hear the more philosophical side of movement, but you also want someone to tell you exactly what to do, and you don't ask too many questions. In 2017, I had dinner with and he described it to me like this. Ito cares a lot about his closest students, but I don't think he'd give a damn if the rest of the world burned down. I was joking, of course, but the statement rings true to a large degree. I'm all for having a close circle you care about, but Ito's disregard of teaching the general public has left it such that they don't know who he is and they don't know what movement means. Bikram Chowdhury created Bikram Yoga decades ago. At its peak, they had almost 1,700 studios worldwide. Even now, over a decade after it's come out that Bikram has repeatedly and pathologically been sexually assaulting his students at workshops, there are still about 40 Bikram Yoga studios listed on their website. Greg Glassman founded CrossFit in about the same time that Ido was becoming popular, and they now have 14,000 locations on their website. Ido, despite his flaws, is easily 10 times the leader that these two could ever be, and movement is so much more powerful than yoga or CrossFit ever was. Yet in 2022, Ido's affiliated gyms can almost be counted on one hand, and many of them have been struggling financially. Here's the worst part. I know all of these teachers. They're not good teachers. They're fantastic teachers, brilliant and hardworking and kind. But when these gyms are not growing, but stalling or failing, there's no room for the next generation and the movement movement is in serious danger. Students don't have access to teachers and these fantastic teachers struggle for lack of students. I believe the problem isn't movement itself, though our field will evolve with more communication and research, but awareness. Those of us who do movement know there's nothing else like it. The philosophy behind it is empowering. The practice is transformative. I think what we need now isn't a movement culture, it's a movement community. That's why I'm putting such disproportionate effort into these videos. Doing things like answering all your questions for 10 hours, then 24 hours nonstop. So we can get awareness and good information out to the general public. The world will benefit greatly from having as many people jump on board as possible. And the need for connecting to your body, movement, and the real physical world will only increase as technology usage and screen time continue to climb in the wrong direction. If you want to help me with this mission and you're new to the movement world, check out this series where I teach you all the most important things you need to know before getting started. Share this video with a friend in the movement culture and all of you, let me know what you think in the comments. Was I too harsh on Ido? What do you think we can do to bring this movement community forward and develop movement on the larger scale it deserves? Subscribe.